Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for um, welcome to Pride Chat, a show where we discuss um, LGBTQ plus people, events, and organization. Uh, my name is Saldi. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Silicon Valley Pride. Um, our guest for today is none other than Ken Yeager. I'll introduce Ken. Um, when introduced, uh, Ken is often fondly referred to as the first ever fill in the blanks. This is because um, he was the first openly LGBTQ plus uh, person ever elected in any office in Santa Clara County. First ever LGBTQ uh, plus uh, San Jose City Council member and the first LGBTQ uh, County Supervisor. Uh, from co-founding Baymac in 1984 to being an, an exhibition director of Queer Silicon Valley, Ken has been involved in almost almost every major local LGBTQ plus milestone in the last 36 years. He is currently a professor at, uh, of political science at San Jose State University and the current executive director of BMEC Community Foundation. Uh, without further ado, um, we, I will welcome um, on the virtual stage, Ken Yeager. Hey. Hello, Ken, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you as well. Great to be here. Yeah, thank you for, uh, uh, thank you for, um, being our guest for Pride Chat uh, today. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, let's let's get into the questions. Um, <laughs> um, so my first question is: um, As you may know, um, yesterday our country elected a new president. I've heard that news. I've heard that. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very milestone for our country. Um, any feelings or thoughts you feel comfortable as sharing to our community? What a great day in the morning. Let me, hallelujah. I, I think, certainly, I think for the entire LGBT community and all progressive people, first, you know, a sigh of relief. You know, there was all that anxiety. I think we were always hopeful, but the fact that, you know, Trump might have pulled it out somehow was of great concern. And then as the hours went by and it looked more and more certain, uh, I think just everybody just felt joyous. And, uh, you know, it's it's still going to be tough. You know, it's going to he's created so much damage. But just to have somebody in the White House talking about a more positive working together America that we're all, you know, we're not Republican, we're not Democrat, we're Americans. And it's so different from what Trump did. And I can't even imagine what would have happened to this country if Trump had won again. So I think we're very fortunate. I think we're going to, you know, have great representation from our community um, in the White House. I'm sure there'll be some um, uh, members of his cabinet in high positions. I, it's just made all the difference. And uh, it's going to be a, a great four years. And we're so, so proud of uh, 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 Kamala Harris and, you know, our vice president um, elect. Can you imagine a, a, a woman of color as our vice president? What? What, what a great day. What a great day for everybody. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Kamala Harris is the first woman, a uh, first person of uh, women of color to ever be elected in vice presidency in, of United States. This is really a milestone. And there's a lot of firsts. Oh, it's so exciting. So exciting for, for, for young girls, for people of color, for immigrants, African-Americans. I mean, um, you can just imagine she just resonates with so many people. And, and I have to say, I mean, um, you know, you know, Joe Biden has has a great track record. And I have to say, I'm so glad that he stuck with it. I'm not sure how many other people would have been able to beat Trump. But the fact that, you know, with all of his years in public office, he knows this game. He could have pulled out whenever he wanted to. Um, but there's just a demeanor about him and wanting to sort of serve the public. Um, and however that was going to work. And of course, he didn't run four years ago. I think we all were so optimistic about Hillary Clinton. But I think uh, I think the whole country is, is going to learn to admire uh, Joe Biden and really appreciate the skills. Politics is tough. Politics is tough, especially in this day and age, you know, with Mitch McConnell and gee, uh, all these jerks out there. Well, you got to work with them if you really want to try to get things accomplished. And of course, first thing we need to do is <laughs> take back most of the wrong, wrong uh, executive orders that the, that President Trump did. Um, but anyway, it was, it's, it was, it's all very exciting. Um, so uh, 
Speaking of politics, um, when did you first? Because uh, on my introduction, you were the first of everything, right? The first um, gay council member, first uh, gay uh, supervisor. So when did you first uh, became interested or involved in politics? Uh, you know, and I often joke um, that I ran for seventh grade president and won. So my, my very first elected office was uh, seventh grade president. You know, I just I was always involved in and in, in interested in politics. Uh, I mean, I grew up um, really in the middle of the civil rights movement um, in the late '60s. Uh, this is at the height of the Vietnam War. Um, as I was getting close uh, to draft age, uh, worried about whether I was then going to you know get drafted and have to fight in Vietnam. Well, if that doesn't make you politically active, I don't know what will. And so, uh, you know, followed elections. Um, you know, uh, really disliked LBJ and, you know, big supporter of, um, of his, his opponent, uh, you know, for that election. So anyway, and always interested, stayed, um, you know, I was class president, student body president, editor of the school newspaper. Uh, but, you know, and people say, well, you know, where did you, where, did you always think you were going to run for office? And when I was growing up and certainly and in college as well, I, I came up uh, to go to San Jose State, um, the idea of an openly gay elected official just just wasn't a, a possibility. You know, maybe it's a sort of something like if you were if you were a, a young girl, you never really said to yourself, "Oh, well, one day I can run for vice president or president." You know, and I always knew that you know there were a lot of uh, LGBTQ people who worked for elected officials, and that that's a great career, and I was happy to do that. You know, I majored in political science, uh, did internships at City Hall, learned how to do campaigns, always in the background, and uh, and, and that was going to be fine. Uh, but things begin to change a little bit. Uh, we might get into um, the, the measures A and B campaigns that happened here in, uh, in, in, in Santa Clara County. Um, and then as there was legislation to try to get non-discrimination ordinances and a local our local assembly member, you know, thought that gay people were so despicable that they didn't deserve any rights what, whatsoever. And, um, and I said to myself, you know, if I don't stick up and fight for my rights, nobody else will. And so that's, that's when I sort of came out publicly. It allowed me to then to um, co-found um, Baymac with Wigsy Sievertson. And that sort of got me on that path of working with the gay community uh, having supporters. So by the time then I run in 1992, um, I was experienced, but I also had the, uh, the, the base, the political base to, to help me win that race. Um, so my, my next question for you, Ken, is, um, is, you know, cause, uh, uh, back then, um, before, um, before we have equal rights uh, for LGBT community. Um, is there any ta challenges? Because you were the first gay, you know, who runs the poli in politics uh, in Santa Clara County. So was there any challenges uh, accomplishing that, that goal? <laughs> well, you know, it was, um, so it's, it's, it's 1992. Um, I'm teaching at San Jose State and I'm, and I'm seeing, because I have a lot of students who are transferred students from the community college system, particularly San Jose City College and uh, Evergreen Valley College. And so there was um, a vacancy on that board. And so that, that was the seat that I, I, I run for. And there were six, six candidates, but it was, um, I think, as they call it, um, a down ballot contest. And I don't think many people other than who knew me knew that I was gay. You know, when you're when you're running for office, it isn't going to be something that you're going to put on the front of your campaign literature. Um, so even though it was my first office, there wasn't any gay backlash. Um, that doesn't happen until 96 when I run for state assembly. And um, again, a lot of support from the from the gay community. There had never been um, a, a, an openly LGBTQ person ever elected to the legislature. You know, that that is, you know, now we have quite a few, but back then we had we had no one. And so it was a, a big battle. And one of the people that um, ran against me um, did a hit piece on my on my being gay. 
you know, that, that my values were not the same as the community values. Um, that what I believed in isn't what other people believed in. And anyway, it was, it was quite damaging. I think people thought I might be able to win that race um, after that piece came out. Uh, as it turned out, then I came, I came out in second. Um, and then I run for city council in 2000. And, uh, and, then, and it came up again. You know, it, it's often the case that you try to keep, if you, if you want to keep a group out of politics, you never let any of them sort of get in. Uh, because once one's elected and people realize, okay, well, they can do the job, then it's easier to get other people elected from, from, that, from, from whatever group that is. And um, so really, it was really, really ugly stuff. Uh, my opponent's um, supporters would drive around uh, the district and when they would see a Ken Yeager for city council sign, uh, they would go up and knock on the door and say, did you know that Ken Yeager was gay? Um, most of the people uh, did and said, you know, get out of here. Uh, but there were a number of people who said, no, I didn't know that he was gay. Uh, boy, that's not good. You can, you can take away the lawn sign. And so that was sort of like that street battle that we were having. But uh, I ended up being successful and won. And, um, and I have to say, for the most part, you just don't see um, anti-LGBTQ things being said ab 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 about candidates uh, like it used to be. So I think it's, it's a big change. And I just want to mention, you know, we, we elected, uh, I believe, six uh, LGBTQ people um, this, this past election, uh, certainly the most we've ever uh, elected uh, you know, in, in one election. And, and to my knowledge, absolutely none of them um, had any sort of LGBTQ um, backlash. That's, that's, yeah, that's very uh, refreshing to hear, uh, Ken. Um, um, just out of curiosity, um, I'm not sure if you've been asked this before, um, who are your important uh, figures in your life um, you would say that uh, made an impact uh, to the person you are today? Yeah, you know, I think people realize that nobody is successful just by themselves. You know, we always need encouragement. We always turn to people to sort of help us out or to, you know, just to say that we can do better or we could do more, particularly during those times that we're feeling a little insecure or um, we're not really quite sure we can, we, we can do something. And I, I, I look back at all the encouragement that I've gotten over the years, and certainly starting with, uh, with my college professor at, at San Jose State that many people know, uh, Dr. Terry Christensen, um, took him for local government classes. And, and you know, God bless him. I, he, he saw something in me as a, you know, 20-year-old political science student who uh, was interest in, interested in, in local government. And he really spent a lot of time with me, um, talking to me, uh, uh, teaching me how politics work. Um, when I did um, internships at City Hall, uh, I could always ask him about questions. Um, when we got involved in a campaign, he had me as a, a precinct coordinator. You know, there I was. What did I know about precincts? And um, <laughs> he, he just sort of helped teach me. And, um, you know, and then I think of uh, Wigsy Sievertson, um, who, uh, my co-founder with, um, with the Bay Area Municipal Elections uh, uh, com uh, Committee. Again, hours, we would spend hours talking about all the various issues and how to approach things because we wanted to make sure that we, uh, that we did them right. Um, and so th that took a, a lot of work. I, I worked for some amazing elected officials who really showed me, you know, how to be a public servant, um, the ethics involved, the things you have to think about. Um, Iola Williams, uh, the first African-American woman, uh, was a great mentor. Susie Wilson, a wonderful um, friend as well, uh, who I worked for on the Board of Supervisors. So I certainly knew about uh, county government ahead of time. And then worked for uh, Congressman Don Edwards, who was um, a revered, revered member of Congress uh, from the San Jose area um, for many years. And, and then lastly, you know, I decided when I was 35 that I wanted to go back to college and uh, get my PhD. And my, uh, my PhD advisor at Stanford, uh, Myra Strober, uh, again, just was always very encouraging. And, um, you know, at times when I would 
sort of wonder, you know, whether I was going to pull this, <laughs> pull this off. Uh, she was always very supportive. So, so right, right off the top of my head, those are the ones that come to mind. You mean you uh, when you mentioned PhD, what uh, what PhD uh, subject did you majored in, or I don't know if you call it majored? <laughs> yeah, no, I got um, I got uh, my master's in sociology and then my PhD in um, education policy, and um, so um, that was you know education is something that uh, obviously I care a, a great deal about, um, and so was able to do a, a lot of research. Um, on, uh, on 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 education policy and uh, and and still work with um, with educators along the way as well. So it was really a, a great experience. Um, it was full scholarship. Um, so you know there I was at you know thirty five being able to go back to school. And it's certainly something that I tell my students all the time. You know you may not re be ready to go to graduate school. You know right after you leave San Jose State, you want to take a little bit of time. Um, you can do that as well. Um, and so it worked out pretty well for me. That's good. That's good. Thank you, uh, Ken. Um, well, thank you for sharing all of your, uh, you know, all of your accomplishment, um, all all history about you. Um, I guess we'll go to the next subject, which is uh, your current um, current project right now, which is uh, Queer Silicon Valley. Um, can you tell uh, Can you tell the audience uh, who is watching today um, about the organization? Or what is the, what is the project about, and how did it how did it get started? Yes, you know I've been so excited about this. Um, I was termed out of office um, after twelve years on the board of supervisors at the very end of two thousand and eighteen, um, and then um, BAMAC, Bay Area Municipal, Municipal Elections uh, Committee um, had created a a nonprofit. Um, several years ago, um, did all the paperwork, but but didn't really know what to do with it. And so, um, as I was thinking about what I wanted to do next, to, you know, the next chapter of my life, um, I decided, well, let's let's see what we can do with the Baymac Community Foundation, and um, you know, see where we can take it and what kind of projects we might want to work on. So, as I'm doing that, and I I, I also went back to teaching at San Jose State. Um, the county had released these funds um, to do community um, history projects. And I was certainly aware that there was no historical record of the LGBTQ community in San Jose, Santa Clara County, Silicon Valley, whatever term you want to use. And so I thought, well, okay, well, you know, let's, let's apply for that and see if we can get it. And then why don't work on that project? And so we wrote the grant. Um, we got um, funded uh, for sixty thousand dollars. There was a, any number of components to it. Uh, we wanted to um, digitize uh, all the uh, Outlook videos um, so people could actually view them. Uh, we wanted to collect uh, information and have uh, people involved in documenting what was going on. And then we also wanted to have a physical exhibit at History San Jose. So the, various to, uh, parts to it. Well, lo and behold, COVID comes along and that pretty much um, puts a halt to uh, doing a, uh, a, a, an exhibit at History San Jose. And so we spent all of our energy um, doing a website and which was great because now we have all this data collected. Um, and I can't, I can't encourage people enough because once you go to queersiliconvalley.org, it's all one word, queersiliconvalley.org, you'll start clicking away and you go, oh, I didn't know that, or I remember that, or I didn't know who that person was. Oh, I didn't know that all these things had been happening. Um, and so it's a great website. And um, it's basically 50 years, 50 years of history here. Um, I've been around <laughs> for a lot of it, not the full 50, but uh, quite a bit of it. <laughs> and so, I, I, so I, I knew what stories were out there and certainly knew a lot of the people that I could then contact to get the story. Um, we were able to buy a whole bunch of editions of our paper, your paper, uh, for people who've been around. That's a, a newspaper that people, a, a LGBTQ newspaper that people would be familiar with, but maybe you had never even heard of it if you're relatively new. 
Uh, there were Out Now magazines. There were other publications. Um, there was the Ted Saul collection at San Jose State. So we just spent, I, I was able to hire a couple of students from San Jose State. And so we just spent all summer collecting all this information. So what you have is we have three timelines, which is amazing. I mean, it's like 200 entries into this timeline. You name it, it's on it. Um, starting in the, um, um, 1976, when um, San Jose had its very first um, gay pride rally. And I should say we have a whole section on, um, on um, SV Pride. Uh, so if you wanna know the first year, where it was, uh, where was it located over time? Um, what about the parades? What about the festivals? Uh, what was it called? All that, the photos, it really just is a, I mean, and that's just one example, but I know Saldi with, uh, with, with your um, involvement and thank you for uh, the years that you've been spending with SV Pride. Um, you know, none of that information had really been collected. You know, you, you ask, well, when was the first one? And when was it at the fairgrounds? And who was it, you know, and people, some people had, some people knew a little bit, but not the whole story. And that, that, and that is a theme that happened throughout this whole process. People knew a little bit, but not everything. Um, and so we really wanted to try to, to capture all of that information. The other thing too is, um, and a lot of this, you know, when, when Thaddeus um, Campbell uh, died suddenly, who was the, I guess, executive director of Silicon Valley Pride and really transformed it into the organization that it is now and the incredible Pride festivals that were put on. I mean, I, I so wish that I had been able to interview him. You know, what was it like? What, 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 what did you inherit in, um, with, with Pride when you took it? It, it over and what were the challenges and all of those kinds of things. And so everybody's story is a little lost when, when we lose them. And um, I just, there's so many stories out there um, that I really wanted to capture that. So that's sort of what I've, I've, I've been doing and um, we are, we continue to expand it. I, I encourage people, if you have some photos, particularly if you have any videos of various events or, you know, gay pride events or anything, it's so easy because it's a web page to be able to put all that information on there. So anyway, I'm happy more to talk about uh, that as well. But then there's so the, the next two steps are to um, make a, a documentary of uh, all of this information. And that's going to be great. And we really want to be able to uh, get it in, into the schools. Um, you know, their schools are mandated now to have some LGBTQ cur curriculum, but they really don't have anything. Um, uh, that is accessible, but being able to tell our story here, I think is going to be very important. And then um, we hope uh, at the beginning of the year to start working on the physical exhibit uh, of, of this material um, at History San Jose. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, I just, just now, full disclosure, um, I used to work at History San Jose. I was doing their events. Uh, I was their events coordinator back then in, uh, in last year before the pandemic. Uh, so shout out to History San Jose. Yes. Um, I think you already discussed that, uh, like how you, um, I don't know if you could further uh, uh, dis uh, discuss this. Um, how did you acquire all of the awesome artifacts? I guess I will call it artifacts. Sure. Uh, of this um, LGBT history in Santa Clara County. Um, well, you know, when I, I it isn't like this sort of came out of the blue. Maybe that's one way to sort of start that. Um, when I was still on the board of supervisors, um, I had done a lot of lot of work on HIV AIDS issues. And, and actually, really, I've been working on HIV AIDS, um, you know, really since 1984 uh, when BAMEC is created. And, um, and I, I knew what an important story it is uh, for, you know, for, for people of my generation who lived through the epidemic, um, as awful as it was, I, I don't think it should be forgotten. Uh, I, I think, I think people's experience needs, ne needs to be recorded. It was probably the most important issue 
that our community has ever faced. <laughs> Donald Trump being right, maybe number second. But anyway, um, and then I think of all the younger people who who were born, um, you know, by the time that we were able to um, to be able to have, you know, the, the medicine to uh, either prevent people from uh, getting HIV positive or from um, uh, or from dying. And so um, right then before I left, I did a whole booklet on the HIV AIDS struggle. So so I'd already sort of been collecting a lot of that information. I certainly had a lot of it myself, but talking to other people from other organizations and then also trying to encourage them to get me photos, to get me information, uh, to get me artifacts. Um, and, and so that, that really was one reason why the HIV AIDS um, segment of the history um, uh, project uh, was already sort of um, underway. Uh, the second booklet that I did was on some of the political struggles that we had here in, in San Jose, and one of them being, uh, again, measures A and B. Um, uh, these were two uh, uh, um, um, referendums that were on the ballot. Uh, the Board of Supervisors and the City Council had approved these non-discrimination ordinances. Uh, the religious right came out of nowhere, uh, got enough signatures to put them on the ballot, and 75% of the people said that they agreed that these ordinances should not take effect, that gay people should should still be allowed to be discriminated against. 75% of the voters. Uh, that was the that was the low for the gay community. And anyway, so that's a whole story. How how do you go from 75% of the voters saying you should have absolutely no rights whatsoever um, to where we are um, and having the sort of the political strength that we do have. I mean, that didn't happen overnight. So anyway, I was trying to tell that story as well. And so again, a lot of photos. Because I was I was involved in this, and I am somebody who sort of keeps information. My whole garage is just full of stuff. Um, I just had it at hand. So I was able to go back and look at things, find things, have the photos. Um, because I did most of the writing for the for the Baymec um, newsletter. Um, I had all that information, but again, talked to a lot of people and, 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 and got material from them as well. So when you think of all these stories, um, another great thing about this exhibit, it's so, it's so great, really, it is just, you just got to go to it today, um, on, um, on organizations. So there's, uh, the story of 35 organizations that um, some are no longer exist, and some of them are going strong, like Billy DeFrank. You know, just trying to get the history of Billy DeFrank. I mean, I remember its very first um, um, building, but uh, not many people do. Well, who who were the organizers way back then? Well, we interview them, we get the material, we get the stuff. Um, and anyway, so at Pro Latino, I mean, I could go on with all these organizations that really no longer exist, but who were they? Why did they do it? Are they still alive? Do they have information that they could send me? So anyway, th that's what it really was. It was just day after day after day after day, knowing what I was looking for. So when I was able to contact people, they would say, oh yeah, I've got that material. Or they could um, give me someone to talk to who did. So Ken, um, one, I believe on your website, queersiliconvalley.org, uh, one of the exhibit that you mentioned is uh, gay bars or LGBTQ bars. Yeah. Uh, um, I believe, uh, quote unquote, uh, our gay or LGBTQ district was in Stockton Avenue where, where all the gay bars are. Um, I Can you tell me more about like I, I believe there's 35 gay bars, LGBTQ bars back then. Yeah, can you tell me more about the history about that? Um, yeah, because you, you based that on one of your exhibits. Thank you. Yeah, there's um, what we do. We 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 break up the exhibit into in sort of three main categories. One being HIV/AIDS, one being culture and community, and the other one being politics and activism. And each one of them has its own separate timeline. Uh, we didn't want to put it all on one timeline because it would just be too much. Um, and then we have um, about 15 different sections that you can click on and get information just about that one section. And if, if you will, 
One of them is, is is Silicon Valley Pride. So that's where you get all that information. Uh, there's maps as to all the locations over over time. Uh, a map of where the uh, where the uh, the parades were held. So just sort of co complete information. So we ha also have one on bars and clubs. And now this was a little harder to do um, because of the bars that might have existed probably in the early seventies. Um, and because they, they're beginning to close by the time you get to the mid eighties, uh, mainly because of HIV AIDS. And so um, we were able to purchase, as I, I mentioned, all these old Our Paper, Your Papers and uh, Lambda News, which was one of the very first publications, uh, Entre Nous, uh, which was a lesbian um, newsletter. So we were able to accumulate all of this and just, I mean, this is what research researchers do, right? And historians went through them and started looking at the first time ads or any article would show up as far as when a bar would open. And so what we tried to do was with all of these bars, um, have their location and, um, and what year they opened. We, it was a little hard, if not impossible, to figure out what year they closed because there really wasn't much uh, news about that. And we, uh, and we are certainly trying to um, interview some of the, um, some of the bar owners, uh, um, some of who are, are still around and, and, of course, would have amazing stories to tell. And so what's great about that is, again, depending on your on your age, you know, which is which is so wonderful about this project of having, again, people my generation or so say, oh, yeah, I remember going to that bar. Oh, I remember, you know, that's where I met or, um, you know, just good, good, fond memories. As other opposed to other people, you know, we only have three bars now, three, um, you know, <laughs> scratching for survival given uh, what's going on, but the fact that there were so many before that, I mean, like, why was that? And where were they? Um, as you mentioned, um, the, most of them were, not all, but a lot of them were on Stockton Avenue um, between Julian and, um, um, and, and, and Taylor. Um, there were like five or six right there. And then a couple other sort of downtown, right, as, as well. Um, and then, you know, there were some, you know, further away uh, in, in Campbell and Mountain View, um, some up a, a little further north as well. So it's just trying to record all of that. And if people can go, wow, I wonder what was going on then. But if you think about it, before the Internet, um, you know, how, how did gay people communicate, particularly in a suburb like we are? You don't go, there's no Castro. Uh, there's no sort of West Hollywood area. And so how, how did you communicate? Well, you did it with the gay press. There, there really were several um, newspapers going on at the same time, sort of um, aimed at a different audience. And then you had all these bars um, that people would go to and meet and, and, then, and then communicate. And so that was sort of, you know, people say, well, how was, how was the, the, the gay community in San Jose different from San Francisco in the sense we had to have our own networks of communication because again, it wasn't like there was a central location where people would go. And with so much activity, let's say happening in San Francisco and so much news, um, that wasn't the case here, but we still had a very vibrant, active community creating its, itself in a, in a way that was separate from the major metropolitan areas like uh, San Francisco, LA and New York. Um, thank you, thank you for sharing that, Ken. Um, and also, thank you for um, uh, doing the queer Silicon Valley project. You know, preserving, like you mentioned, preserving all of the LGBT history um, here in Santa Clara County. Um, with that, uh, so since we are going down in history lane, um, what <laughs> is the is or are major differences between in our Bay Area or Santa Clara County community LGBT community before and today? I'm sorry. Uh, what what's different? Um, um, how would say? Um, yeah, like what's the what's the difference between um, the LGBTQ uh, in the past and today? I guess we're talking about, uh, in terms of history. Yeah, you know, I I'm I, I'm thinking more in terms of let's say organizations, um, particularly those dealing 
with populations that um, that that weren't as as formed as they are now, particularly let's say the 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 uh, trans community, where now there's there's groups, there's a, a great deal of attention, uh, there's medical services in ways that you just never would have had before. Um, we we also talk about some of the dark days, and um, w there was a very very terrible killing of a of, of a of a young trans woman, uh, Gwen uh, Araujo in in Fremont, um, and and I think that really was a, an awakening for for many of us of the violence that um, trans people. Um, experienced, and I think you know we've we've tried very hard here to be um, very open and accepting of trans people and making sure that they have the resources that they need. And so, like for example, um, when I was on the board of supervisors, we raised uh, the 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 trans flag um, during um, during. Um, Gay Pride, and we were the very first government agency that had ever flown the trans flag. Um, when I was on the board, I wanted to make sure that uh, we had good medical services, and so we were able to create the um, the trans health clinic um, in in downtown San Jose. So you know, a lot of it is like, well, okay, how did that trans clinic start? Or we were also able to create the Office of LGBTQ Affairs, which is an amazing organization um, out of the county office. Uh, well, how did that happen? And so um, we, we talk about all the various steps and the people that were involved in making that happen. Plus, if you think about what that office is doing, it is fully staffed. Um, they work certainly on county issues, but they're a resource that other people can go to as well. And it's those type of things that I think are just transforming the community down here because suddenly we have resources, but we have people whose job, whose job it is to be able to um, make sure that the LGBTQ community is being represented, uh, but it also offers great training um, and internships uh, for LGBTQ people who wanna then go into uh, the profession um, working on some of these issues. So I think, you know, uh, way back when it just, you know, it was so hard to be out. Um, people kind of laugh, you know, well, you know, with BAMAC, with Bay Area Municipal Elections Committee, where'd you come up with that name? You know, and I could certainly tell you where we came up with that name, but it, 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 you couldn't have, you couldn't have gay and lesbian in, in your name. God forbid the male person knew would know <laughs> you were gay, you know? Um, and so you go from a very closeted community, uh, and again, a community where people are being fired from their jobs, they didn't come out. Um, then you get HIV AIDS and people are, you know, well, you know, if, I, if they cough, you know, am I, am I gonna get HIV positive? You know, issues dealing with quarantine of, of people who were uh, HIV positive, who, you know, many times, you know, dying alone by themselves because they, there wasn't any support system for them. And so you get through all of that, you know, to where we are now, we're, again, we're electing young gay people to office. We have services um, for really just about any segment of, of our community. Um, you get very positive um, um, stories in the, in the local newspaper. So anyway, it's just, it's almost unbelievable how different it is now than it was then. And, um, and we're also trying to, you know, keep track of the stories that are happening now. So we have them recorded. So 20 years from now, somebody doesn't have to find all, all the old newspapers and to write that story. Hopefully we'll have all that information that, um, it, the, and, and have it um, archived. So other historians are gonna be able to use it. Thank you, Ken, for sharing that. Um... Um, if someone watching today is interested in supporting, uh, maybe volunteering uh, of the works of Silicon Valley, uh, Queer Silicon Valley project, uh, how can they do that? Well, they can certainly go to queersiliconvalley.org um, and then, you know, certainly send me a message. Um, 
as I had said before, and I really, really mean it for people who, who are um, watching, um, if you have old photos, and I should say, we haven't really had a chance to talk about all the different sections uh, in this amazing website, but one of them is marriage equality. And so we talk about all the things that happened here um, in Santa Clara County. We didn't have a mayor like Newsom, you know, <laughs> marrying people, but uh, a lot was going down on here. And so that's interesting. But now we've been able to people send photos of their wedding pictures and then we include it. And how much fun is that? So, um, but there's again, a whole bunch of different sections. And so uh, if you were involved um, in, in Eris uh, or Billy DeFrank, um, anything dealing um, with the gay press, um, uh, Sister Spirit, uh, any of these organizations that we include. We have a whole um, section on um, LGBTQ uh, plus in tech. Um, a major part of this story here is, you know, you have gay people working at tech companies well before there was any non-discrimination ordinances. And, you know, uh, and if you... Um, um, if, if you were working for one of those companies and you needed security clearance, um, but you were gay, uh, chances are you weren't going to get that security clearance. And so they really needed to change uh, the federal laws that um, being gay wasn't a reason not to get um, security um, clearances. So anyway, if you have those kind of stories, again, if you have um, um, video of footage of any sort of activities, uh, that makes for a much better um, video that we're going to be doing. Um, so, um, you know, that's better and more interesting than a still picture, if you will. Um, so those are the type of things that we're looking for now. Yeah, uh, for everybody who wants to support, uh, just go to the website, which is uh, scrolling down on the on the screen, queersiliconvalley.org. Um, if you want to, like uh, Ken mentioned, if you have any historical uh, uh, photography, images, um, videos, yeah, check check it out or uh, contact them. Um, so we're gonna go to the next segment, which is a Q and A from the audience. Um, we have one of the Q and A. Um, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read it, Ken. Okay. Um, uh, this is from G Jason Scholl. Um, the question is: uh, There is really great LGBTQ plus history collected in Philly and Miami. Are, are your collection going to be dis uh, discoverable nationwide somehow? Yeah, the nice thing too about the um, about the website, as opposed to if we had done an exhibit first, and I should say that there's an exhibit um, in, um, in San Diego, which is I had gone down to and seen one, and that really had inspired me to do one up here as well. But because so much of it, again, is, is on the website, that anybody can sort of access it. And certainly when we do the documentary as well, they'll be able to do it. Um, we we want to get this story out, you know, throughout the country. Um, so people know, you know, when you think of Silicon Valley and how it, you know, sort of in many ways changed the world, <laughs> better or for worse, um, that, uh, you know, it happened here and there were a lot of gay people who were involved in it. And so my hope is that historians are going to be very interested in the story that we have to tell here. Awesome. Um, any any uh, words of wisdom you would like to share with us for people who wish to continue the work and advocacy that you are doing for our community, our LGBT community? Yeah, you know, a lot of times people here realize how good things are, if you will, and, and they are, they, they, they could be better, um, but, you know, at least we do have our rights in California, um, which isn't the case in other states as well. It's still uh, allowable um, to discriminate um, in other states, but we're doing pretty well here. Um, but to, to be active, particularly in this very strange time when we're sort of quarantined and we don't have a lot of places where we can, you know, meet people, um, to still... <laughs> Be aware that there's going to be a need sometime to be able to sort of move quickly to organize people. Um, so if you if are interested in a particular topic or subject, there's no reason why you can't be working on that or meeting other people. Um, when I think of my career 
It really has happened because of all the people I've met throughout the years. So whether it's on social media or however you do it, keep track of people, meet people, learn about different organizations and things that are going on because you because it all becomes a resource that you have as an individual. And I think that's sort of been the guiding light in my career. And, um, and certainly in politics, that's what you need. But I would certainly encourage younger people who really want to make a change to begin working in ways like that. Um, so I have another uh, audience question. Uh, this is leaning more towards politics. Um, this is from uh, Bill uh, Segelman. Uh, sorry if I butchered the, the last name. Um, who, um, now that uh, Pamela Harris is the new vice president of United States, um, who should uh, Governor Newsom appoint uh, to Kamala Harris's uh, Senate, seat, Senate seat? Ah, now that's a great question. Um, something that I know that people throughout the state are certainly um, asking. Uh, boy, a lot of lot of good choices. Um, I mean, like, how could you not love Barbara Lee um, as certainly a, as a as a possibility? Um, you know, it'd be wonderful to get um, uh, some uh, LGBTQ representative as well. We have so many really strong leaders um, in the area, uh, in Southern California, Los Angeles um, as well. Um, then you think of, you know, Adam Schiff and what he, a good job he did during the impeachment hearings uh, in the House, uh, probably is right up there as well. So it's sort of going to be whoever uh, the governor really feels comfortable with. But you know, just as we know that, um, you know, he appointed uh, the first um, African, gay African-American judge uh, to the uh, state Supreme Court. Uh, this is an individual who seems willing um, to break barriers and, and come up with, with, with people who have a, a real story to tell and from groups that are not always represented. Um, you know, certainly when you think of what he did with gay marriages, um, you know, he's willing to be bold. And so, uh, I'm 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 looking forward to uh, the person that he's going to nominate or or choose. He doesn't he gets to make the choice, so he isn't like nominating him. Yeah. Um, another question is from uh, Rich uh, Partridge. Um, if uh, since we're also talking about uh, LGBT history, um, um, if the Supreme Court strike down a gay marriage, uh, what do you think uh, California should uh, will do or should do? <sighs> well. Um, I think we'll know soon um, when the you know they're they're hearing this case on it, it it's going to tie back to religious freedom and whether or, uh, organizations and businesses um, have to serve gay people if um, if it's against their religion and I think that's going to tell us right off whether. This is a court that's going to try to overturn gay marriage or not, um, because marriage is such a function done by states. It's a little. It, they might be able to say, "Okay, Arkansas, if you don't want to <laughs> marry gay people, you don't have to." But I don't think they could be able to say California, even though your your court and your laws say you can get married, all of a sudden now you can't. I, I think it's going to be more of again. Do, if 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 it sort of goes back to the wedding cake, if you're a gay couple and you you want a service like a cake, and they say no, we're not going to give it to you. Again, the worry is that the court's going to say that's perfectly fine, and so you begin to sort of chip away at um, laws that have you know barred discrimination against gay people because then all of a sudden, okay, well some people you know some people can you know discriminate against gay people and that's just fine, and. Um, you know, again, I think it would be hard to say that um, that you can't get married. I, I just worry that if um, if states that wanted to have another vote, or, or if their state supreme court said, "Okay, gay, gays can't get married," maybe the supreme court would say, "Well, that that's fine. Um, you, you're allowed to do that, but you're also allowed to keep them if you want." So I think that's the worst case scenario. That all of a sudden it's it's no longer legal throughout the country. Um, but it, it goes back to state by state, which of course is what it was before the Supreme Court decision. Thank you, uh, Ken, for uh, for answering that because I, I remember uh, back then when 
it was a strike down or or I, I don't remember there was a big rally uh in downtown san jose that was there's a large a lot large burnout and it's a prouding moment too like when when our lgbt community and straight allies are come together and yeah like do a protest um in at city hall yeah yeah um any last uh, word uh, for our audience today yeah uh well you know again a, a bit of celebration um because of the election and i think there's just going to be a lot of amazing things um, that are that are going to be happening, um, you know. But um, there's again a, a lot of people in the community that are going to need our support. Um, young people, uh, first and foremost, I think, need services, need uh, need mentoring. Uh, we have far too many young LGBTQ kids who are kicked out of their home. Um, too many of them that are living on the streets in, in very dangerous situations. Um, so we have to make sure that we're doing whatever we can to help them. Um, we need to absolutely make sure that young kids um, understand more about HIV and transmission, uh, that there's medicines that is in, that are that is involved, uh, Truvado, there's things that you can take so you don't get infected. Um, the, the segments of our community uh, with the highest infection rates are of minorities, uh, particularly African American and, and Latino. Um, so we've got to make sure that uh, the word is still being spread out there, um, that that is happening. Um, we know that uh, issues uh, with with trans people is you know still uh, it can be very dangerous um, for them, and we need to make sure that we have laws that are protecting them, but also services as well. So I think we're all doing whatever we can. But, but never for a moment think that there isn't more that we can do. And again, I think you really are looking for ways that we can uh, participate um, with gay organizations. Hopefully we can open things up again. It's, you know, as we know, Billy DeFrank has been closed. And so that's been difficult. But a lot of these other um, social service agencies uh, have been as well. Um, so yeah, you know, stay engaged, um, connect to organizations, um, give back to the community as much as you can. Because uh, I think you're going to find it very gratifying. And then again, if there's some crisis that comes up, um, we're going to be better organized it and we'll be able to fight it. Um, yeah, thank you, Ken, for uh, for joining me uh, today for Pride Chat. Um, uh, for, for the audience, I just want to give a shout out. Uh, so the virtual Queer Silicon Valley exhibition uh, covers 50 years of LGBTQ plus history in Santa Clara County. It includes archival documents, narratives, photog photographs, interviews, and videos to showcase the Valley's rich but largely untold LGBTQ plus story. The website at queersiliconvalley.org is organized by topics such as politics and activism, cultural and community, and HIV and AIDS. Among its uh, treasure trove of content, it contains a timeline for all important um, LGBT events over the last 50 years and contain sections uh, titled such as Latinx, uh, Crime, LGBTQ+, in Tech, Marriage Equality, Trans Community, Pride, Mars and Clubs, Elected Officials, Billy DeFrank Centers, and other organizations, just to name a few. Uh, you can easily spend hours learning about our LGBTQ plus uh, people uh, in San Francisco in Santa Clara County, who uh, who paved the path for us all. Again, uh, thank you, Ken, for joining uh, joining me today for Pride Chat, and I'll see you uh, after the pandemic. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thanks, appreciate it. Thank you.